Hi! Today we're going to be sharing with you our top five books of 2013 individually, so in total there will be ten books. By the way, if you don't know me, my name's Marion. Um, I'm Marion Honey on the YouTube. She lives in the room next to mine. Yeah. This is in no particular order of love, by the way. It's just this happens to be the one on the top of the pile. One of my favorite books that I read this year was The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. I had never read anything by this author before, and I'm really into film, and I wanted to watch the movie, and I'm a stickler for reading the books first. And I knew Sana had it because she bought this with me when I was living in LA. Was it The Last Bookshop? The Last Bookstore, last I think bookstore. it is. And if you live in Los Angeles, you should really go check it out because it's a beautiful independent bookshop. This is some of the most beautiful, fantastic writing. It's a really accessible read, fantastic kind of study of the American American teenager. If it hadn't already been on my top 10 last year, I would have used it now. Oh god, yeah, good book. And I'm now reading um, Middlesex right now, so I'm on a bit of a eugenity's kick. My first one is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I think I only gave it four stars on Goodreads. I read it this year for the very first time in preparation for the movie, but it is one of those books that kind of sticks with you, and even though I think I had a hard time getting through it, there's so many beautiful lines, and having seen the movie a couple of times, this is a book that I definitely want to reread as soon as possible. Another book that I picked up this year to read to watch was Mildred Pierce. You might recognize the title as an older classical Hollywood film, but I think there's been a recent adaptation with Kate Winslet. But it's a book that's set in the US in the 1930s, 1920s, 1930s, that follows a single mother, a single career woman. I'd say the style of the writing really reminded me of Steinbeck, and I love Steinbeck, so that's why I really enjoyed it. It kind of has that lonely prairie sort of feel to it. Oh, that is nice. If that makes yeah. any sense. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. So if you're looking for a bit of a more obscure, kind of like old classic American literature, early 20th century read, I'd definitely suggest that one. Marion, look away now. <sighs> I have How I Live Now by Meg Rossoff, which Marion also read. She read it before me, even though I got this as a review. <laughs> You got me. She didn't like it very much, but I absolutely love this. This is like right up my alley because it's apocalyptic and it's kind of slow and I just loved everything about this. I read Picture Me Gone first and then people told me to read this one as well and I wanted to see the movie. I quite enjoyed the movie as well. And it's one of those books that I had never heard about before, but everyone has read this. Everyone I talked to at work especially, mm. they'd all read this 10 years ago and it came up. So moving away from some of the heavier recommendations I've been giving you, my uh, third book I want to share with you is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Finally. I had seen the film ages ago in cinemas when it came out. They've always been on my to-read list, but I just never got around to it. I kind of had a mixed relationship with it at first. At first, the humor just wasn't resonating with me. Like, I knew it was being funny, but I was just kind of like, eh. But I believe the part with the whale? Yeah. <laughs> Once you <laughs> the get- the bowl of petunias. <laughs> Once you get to the bit with the whale, I really think that it just kind of grabs you and you're in. You're in it, you get the humor. It's just so quirky and wonderful and I definitely want to read the other ones in the in the series now. So if you've ever thought about reading this, you've just been putting it off like I was, just start with the first one. Get past the whale. I think you'll like it. Let's do some graphic novels. I have two graphic novels on the list. The first one, I thought I wouldn't have a copy to show you guys, and then I ordered two of these for friends that live abroad, and then one of them arrived in my house. I might have made a mistake. I'm gonna keep it. The Arrival, it's massive. Ugh. The Arrival by Sean Tan? This graphic novel doesn't have any words in it. So it has all these faces of immigrants, I guess, in the front. And it is about a man that has to leave his family to move to a different country. It's about the alienation that kind of occurs when you move to a different country and you don't know anyone. So the pages look like this. So this is how the story is told. In between there's like these beautiful huge pictures that kind of depict the country that he came from and the places that he's now. It's very kind of fantastical with a bunch of weird creatures in it. While you're reading this you can't help but connect it to certain events in history. Great for gifts. It's a bit odd to give as a gift because it's quite sad. But you know those people in your life that you think will appreciate this. The fourth book I'm gonna share with you, I do own, but I can't find it. Who borrowed my copy of Submarine? I'm gonna come find you. Submarine by Joe Dunthorne. Another book that I read to watch the movie. <laughs> Seems to be a common theme. She is very strict about it. Like, yeah. She will not go see a movie with me if she hasn't read the book. So both Submarine, the book, and the film were just so excellent. Submarine's also kind of like this kind of dark humor 
woven into the storytelling. It's really like a coming of age story of a 15 year old boy. I feel like it's um, like a 15 year old five days of summer. He falls in love with this girl. He's a bit of an unsavory character mm -hmm. as a lot of 15 year old boys are. He's just kind of becoming more self-aware and realizing that the girl that he's fallen in love with is an actual person with feelings no. and that she doesn't necessarily <laughs> have to feel the same way as he does about her. Kind of devastatingly hilarious just the antics that he gets up to and he just views the world in this really twisted and closed-minded uninformed way and I think it's really fun to have sort of a narrator that doesn't have a head on his shoulders really. The next book is one from Hotkey which is where I work and I have a special relationship with this book because I was asked to read Heap House by Edward Carey for my job application and they made me write like a marketing plan for it and stuff. I'll put a link to that in the description because they put all of it online. Edward Carey did the illustrations for the cover and he also wrote the book. I've been describing it as like a combination between a series of unfortunate events and and like Charles Dickens kind of stuff. It's hard to explain what it's about, but it's worth it. It's about this family called the Ironmonger family and they live outside of London in kind of the mountains of trash that are outside of the city. It's kind of like a Victorian-y setting and they live in this massive house and every member of the Ironmonger family gets a birth object when they're born and they have to carry that object around with them all the time. So then there's Claude Ironmonger here and he can hear everyone's object say a name. You're not supposed to hear these objects speak, so he's a bit of an odd one out. At the beginning of the book, these objects start misbehaving and disappearing, and weird things are going on. For every chapter you get a portrait of the characters. It's so great! The final book I want to share with you that I read in 2013 that I absolutely loved was Train Spotting. So this is a book that's completely written in a Scottish dialect. This is a difficult read and you, I really suggest reading it out loud to yourself first. It focuses on Edinburgh in the 1980s, I believe, with the heroin epidemic that was happening there at the time. It's kind of an episodic story structure. It's not really a linear narrative and it deals with all these different characters, particularly one drug addict Again, this is a really kind of dark and heavy read, but it is really laced with humor. So I really think Train Spotting is a thoroughly enriching read. And it also, well, it has a reward for when you finish this really difficult book. You get to watch the movie! Yay! My final one is Habibi by Craig Thompson, which is the biggest graphic novel I have ever seen. I've read Blankets by Craig Thompson as well, which was really good. I think you read it yeah. as well. I don't own any of these, and I kind of do want to own them. Oh, right, you borrowed Blankets. The outside of the graphic novel kind of looks like a Quran as far as I'm familiar with it. It's about a girl and a little boy and I think the little boy was about to be sold in slavery and she kind of takes him in and they live in this ship in the desert and she has to do all kinds of stuff to kind of keep them alive and she kind of, I think she becomes a prostitute. There's like a lot of kind of abuse so you kind of have to make sure that you're okay with reading about yeah. it because it's really, it's kind of sad and it's kind of horrifying. The imagery in it, it's beautiful and there's so many layers in these drawings and I think that's what Greg Thompson does really well. There's like full page layouts that are just like these wild dreams. In between the lines there's all the stuff from the Bible and the Quran and kind of comparing them but not in a like which one's better mm. way obviously but just kind of showing how they are similar and how they're different. I couldn't really read it in public because there's quite a lot of nudity in it. It was super impressive. It was absolutely beautiful. Those were our 10 favorite books, 2013. There you have it. Go out and read. Let me know which ones you choose. Or if you've read any of these and what do you think about them. We will put both of our Goodreads links yeah. in the description because we're, I mean, I'm doing the 50 book challenge. You're doing the 25 book challenge. Keeping my standards realistic. I'll see you guys later. Doing.